Welcome, welcome, welcome to the community cohort. I'm Josh. He's Corey. Hey. That's Greg. Yep. And we're glad that you're joining us, growing closer to God during your daily whatever. whatever. We're going to be continuing to go through Ephesians, covering chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. But before we go through that, I thought we might discuss Corey's secret talent. Man, I'm on the spot here. Right now. Right now. And go. So it probably no longer exists. I'm guessing I don't have this talent any longer. But when I was a young feller, we went on a vacation to a um, island resort. Uh, it was Curacao, uh, kind of island near Jamaica. Were you but doing the Hulu? Hula? Hulu? It was not Hulu? the Hula. It's the maybe Hulu. a step above <laughs> being as embarrassing as the Hula. But I was, uh, I was allowed to uh, participate they have a, a, a trapeze thing that you could you could work on throughout the day like a like a legit like 30 foot high like trapeze thing they had wow. you hooked up to wires and you could you could hang out and and work with the people there throughout the day and then uh, I got to perform in a flying trapeze show there might even be video out there somewhere no but I'm not uh, not gonna unearth <laughs> that for anybody oh my gosh we really need that I yeah. I want to see that Corey I don't uh, know I was like in a leotard so I'm gonna guess you probably I, don't want to see that I, I was wondering I was wondering how you how you dressed yeah I mean <laughs> and I had like the worst leotard too it wasn't even like cool like they had these guys had like spider-man looking leotards and they put me in like some like Purple, kind of gold, bedazzled. kind of golden, almost glittery appearing. Oh, uh, wow! Did yeah, you have a beard? Leotard. No, I didn't. I, oh, I didn't have a beard pre-beard. at that point. How, I, was, how, I say, how old are you? I think I was thirteen. I want to say okay, thirteen. Only pre-beard. So I was, I was pretty young All right. when that took place. Twelve to thirteen. So, so in there. So were you like ready to go off and and join the circus after that? I mean. Uh, real close. I thought about you know packing up my uh, my bindle and uh, uh-huh. and uh, heading off to the circus. <laughs> that was in my plans. But uh, you were know. you were you uh, being thrown or being caught or just swinging? Uh, well, so you. I mean, a lot of it. You hook your you hook your legs on the the bar there, and then you get caught by the the person on the next bar over. So uh, I learned I think the I think the trick that I learned was called the bird's nest and so like you had to like kind of contort your body, get your hands and your arms up and it's like almost like a back bend but while you're in the air uh, and then release and get caught by the guy is it was, it was pretty it was pretty impressive, I'll say. Sound, you know? Sounds impressive to me. Corey but, is uh, a trapezist. Yeah, but I'm much larger and less fit <laughs> in my current state, so I don't know. Well, those things change. Yeah, they they do. But I mean, it it I would say that's probably my most secret secretest. Wow. Not everybody knows that about me. I can um I can I can do the flame eating. So you I, can? Huh? No, I can't. I, oh I, man, because I, I thought we almost had a circus show going because I can juggle and I can throw knives. Oh hey, can see, you really? I didn't, know, I didn't know that you were a juggler. Can you juggle? I, I knew that. Yeah, you threw the knives. just. Just just three balls. I can't do you know three things. I can't I can't do four, and so I. It's kind of a <laughs> tight space up here on my mic to juggle, but uh, <laughs> with these little tiny things. But I I can juggle. You can so, juggle, huh? Yeah, I, I've never been a successful juggler. That's that's something I'd always wish that I could learn. But I can I can juggle yeah, one definitely. Definitely not good at that's, that. That's impressive. That, yeah. <laughs> that's where it starts. A nice, a nice toss yep. that you got yep. going on there. Yep. My brother, my brother can juggle, and that's that's he he gets me there. He beats me in the juggling. Yeah. Well, we do. We almost have a circus hack going on. We Let, we'll just rig up I mean, some trapeze we do have up the clown in the... over there. Maybe. Oh, oh, the oh <laughs> Josh is the funny one. The sure. jester, or maybe a ringleader. I could see you as a ringleader. Oh, there you go. I would look fantastic in a top hat. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you would, you would for sure. Go back to the mustache, oh, just yes. the mustache, hundred percent. Top hat would be now. Be now, super. if we can just round up some animals, and uh, I've got a herd of children at home. I'm sure that would probably <laughs> that would probably it be, would be really impressive if you could get them to sit still. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now you can watch my children be quiet. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't really have a lot of secret talents, but I can eat popcorn like nobody's business, so <laughs> I could be the spectator out there. <laughs> the spectator? Oh, man. Wow. Just a master popcorn eater. I could, I don't know, I could heckle probably from the, from the stand. Go faster! <laughs> <laughs> 
that would be a that would be an interesting thing trying to put together a circus act. I I don't know that I want to do it, but surprisingly, I think that it could actually be done. That <laughs> yeah, I mean a very very unenjoyable, not super entertaining circus. That's I, probably why it would be entertaining. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> People would probably be throwing cabbages and tomatoes if I were to guess. Yeah, I heard free food. So count me <laughs> that in. does sound like a salad, which I also don't yep. care for. And that's why I couldn't be a trapeze oh, artist man. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, maybe we should uh, move. <laughs> maybe we should move on. <laughs> that's a that's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I'm, why, don't, why don't I pray and then we'll uh, head into our reading our scripture passage today. But Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for the laughs that we've had already this morning and this this time that we get to hang out together and look at your word and Lord we ask that you would be um, glorified in this conversation and we ask Father that you would um, Lord, just speak to us and for those that are listening Lord that they would that you would speak to them as well in the midst of, of this time and through your word Father we ask these things in your name Amen All right we are going to be going through Ephesians chapter 4, 7 through 16 this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read that for us now. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took the captives captive, he gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower parts of earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. All right, so we are still in the book of Ephesians, and um, as we have been since the beginning of the podcast, and uh, we're in chapter 4, and this is really kind of where Paul starts to, you know, um, you know, the, the rubber starts to meet the road, right? And this is not just talking about theoretical things. It's about how do we live this out and, and what should we be doing um, and taking this theology that he's given us and, and putting legs to it, so to speak. And, and this is all kind of follow, falling underneath what we talked about last week when he told us and encouraged us at the very beginning of chapter four to walk worthy of the calling you have received. And, uh, and so, obviously, we're, we're moving on um, to a, a conversation on spiritual gifts here. And, um, and so, he, in this passage, he only talks about uh, just the five spiritual gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Um, and so, th- those are the ones that he really talks about, but just wanted to start off with the conversation just maybe what is the role of the spiritual gifts in the church yeah so i mean i think we've talked about this on previous podcasts a little bit i think too um just us all being different parts of the body also made mention last week that you know many hands make light work but the reality is that it takes all the individual parts to make to make things happen and we all have different gifts um, we all have different personalities, different things that we're more capable than others, and um, without those individual parts, we wouldn't be able to accomplish a whole lot. We all kind of lean on each other to be able to to get things done and to be able to lift one another up, and and mm-hmm. having those different those different things really makes a big difference. I think. Absolutely, there's everybody's got something that they're specifically good at. Um, Greg and I were having a conversation uh, a couple months ago about uh, personality types and mm. leadership skills and what have you with, with that. And we were talking about, you know, the doers, the people who can go out and make things happen. There's idea people. There's 
people who ask the right question at the right time, you know, those who can get people around and get something completed. And it's ne- the church isn't going to be successful in reaching people like we should if we don't have people from every different types because all of those tasks need to happen and everybody's got something that they're good at something that they're okay at and something that they're trash at and knowing (laughs) knowing that you have those weaknesses allows other people to step in and lift you up in those specific areas yeah and and i like kind of what one of the things that you pulled out there josh which is that um you know there's a mission here there's a there's a point here um, to to this and and and, and where the church is intended to be accomplishing something, not not just hanging out. It's not just there for our own personal benefit to make us feel good in the moment or things like that. And I'm not saying those things don't happen and that's you know bad when it happens. What I'm saying is that ultimately we are given a, a goal, a task to accomplish, and to do that we have to be. A team we have to be yep. multifaceted absolutely we got to be working towards something if not if you're not working towards something you're you're stagnant mm-hmm. yeah yep. yeah and that's that's really important and uh to think about and so he lists out like i said just the five spiritual gifts here i i always remember the the spiritual gifts in this passage by the acronym apest um you know apostle prophet evangelist shepherd teacher um is how i remember that and um <clears throat> but uh you know is this all the spiritual gifts uh no there are like is it is it like 12 there's a 12? lot there's, you, it, 12 might be right <laughs> i i don't i don't know the exact number but i was i was looking them up uh before i came in this morning um I haven't taken a spiritual. Uh, I haven't taken a spiritual gifts quiz in a while, but I probably should take another one. I think to kind of just that really would have been probably wise of us. That that would have been. But I think one of my previous ones was uh, service is one of the kind of the ones where I landed, mm-hmm. which I don't know if that's uh, an official uh, official one how it's listed in the in scripture there. But yeah, so, serving. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but what there's there's a lot. There are a lot. Yeah, I saw craftsmanship. Listed as one of them. Craftsmanship, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of spiritual gifts, and, and uh, like, the spiritual gifts don't just, re- you know, are, they're not just restricted to the things that the ge- the Spirit gives us that the ability to accomplish. Like, the, the, the real spiritual gift starts with the Holy Spirit and, and life coming in into, you know, c- coming getting life from from jesus and so you know that's the that's the first spiritual gift is is that Mm -hmm. and then from there i mean there's any number of things like i think craftsmanship might be a reference to uh, going back into the old testament when god was talking to moses and said hey i Mm -hmm. put my spirit upon these couple of guys so that they have the ability to build all of these things, the ark and the you know, tent and the, the tabernacle, all of these all of these things. And I put my spirit on them so that they will have the ability to do that. So there's, there, there's a large number of spiritual gifts. And, and I'm one who, who says I'm not sure that the Bible specifically lists out every single spiritual gift. I think that it's possible that there are spiritual gifts. The, the, the lists that we have aren't supposed to be uh, whole, telling us all of them, but giving well, us an put, idea yeah. of of what type of spiritual gifts are out there. Yeah, never kind of want to put anything God can do in a box in any sort of situation. So even if there is a list, it's I, I do, like you're right. I think it is kind of it's kind of open ended. But I think in my view, I would I would say that anything that we are gifted at and um, we use to glorify God, I think, can really be a spiritual gift. God blesses us with certain talents and abilities, and um, you know, if we're using those for Him, that can be definitely a gift of the Spirit. Yeah, I was looking at verse thirteen, and verse thirteen tells us, "Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness." You have any idea what He's talking about? Us growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Is that when hair starts to come in your armpit? <laughs> that might be a different different time. Oh jeez. Josh. 
I appreciate See, that's, that. That's why you'd be the clown in our circus. <laughs> <laughs> I also just noticed that you have the uh, the red microphone cover, and when you get your face down close, <laughs> <laughs> Josh, yes. looks, Josh is looking a little bit clownish there. <laughs> I think we were talking about maturity, Corey. Right. We were were trying to talk about. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, some levity goes a long way sometimes. Uh, I mean, so there's there's parts in the Bible that talk about when we were children, we were, you know, drinking spiritual milk. mm -hmm. And then when we grew up, it became time to eat meat. Consume solid food. eat, Eat solid food. Yeah. You know, and it kind of, for me, it kind of echoes that, that specific pas- um, passage. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were growing into maturity with stature measured by Christ's fullness, I mean, it really is that's, that he's, he is our measuring stick. That's our, that's our goal is to be Christ-like. And so anything that we can do to progress towards that, that is, that is the goal. Yeah. And perhaps it's a little unfair of me to pull out verse 13, you know, when, when you have to also consider the sentence starts actually up in verse 11, telling us that these apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds came with the, with the goal. The, the point of these, these gifts was not so that they would go out and, you know, the evangelists would, would reach people or that the pastors would teach people or, the, you know, those, those are good things. But the point for them to do it, to use their gifts is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and to build up the body of Christ until we reach this unity, until we reach um, maturity uh, with a stature uh, by, by Christ's fullness. And so it's not something that um, it's something that, that we are gifted to do. You know, our ministry, our mission is not just to reach other people, but it's, it's for us as Christians to continue to grow and I think what you're talking about there, Josh, with growing from, you know, hey, I'm drinking spiritual milk to I'm ready to start, you know, eating solid food, which is what 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 God desires for us is true. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at these spiritual gifts and uh, we're looking at how he pulls us together and, and unites us. But what do I need to have these spiritual gifts for in my personal life? And, and, and what does that mean for me as, as a person? You know, the fact that I have a spiritual gift, because this passage makes it seem like there's only five and there's a, only a handful of people who get it. But the reality is we all have spiritual gifts. We've all been, been gifted. Uh, so how does that kind of impact us personally? When you label it, I think when you start to call it a spiritual gift, it's first for me, it was always that haunt, that search of what is my spiritual gift? What is it that I'm good at? What is it that I, I could be doing, should be doing, do well or better than most in order to uh, advance the process. But when you're, uh, for the personal life it's you know understanding that that gift is meant to be for spiritual use when you understand that that's what that gift is for then you want to use it for that purpose when you're labeling it as what it's supposed to be used for um i agree i agree with you josh for sure like um and i think i had a little bit of a an epiphany, if you will, not that long ago where like, I really, um, feel like the things that God has granted me need to be being used in a spiritual, um, in a spiritual like avenue of some, of some variety. So just, I think it maybe makes you be a little bit more intentional about how you're utilizing yeah. the things that God has granted you. Um, and so I think that makes a big difference in your personal life. Um, and I think it just makes you more intentional about your relationship with God too. If you're mm-hmm. if you're if you're focused on using His gifts um, for His you know for His glorification, um, it also makes you just be a little bit closer to Him and and seeking Him in, in right. your daily life. So when you have that, you know, it's a gift from God, right? It really, kind of drives you to I need to use this for His purpose. Yeah. And, and and I think also it brings this sense of 
fulfillment mm-hmm. using using your spiritual gift uh, when when 100%. you know what it is and you realize that, you know this is how God has gifted me and you step into that role and you start putting it to use uh, I mean it 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 doesn't mean that life's easy and everything goes you know smoothly and simple and and all of that sort of stuff but it it does you know oh man i i feel more i feel fulfilled i feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to do that i'm yep. that i'm accomplishing what i'm supposed to accomplish and that's a that's a powerful place to be um in, in life when we put ourselves into that role and into that into that serving position but then put to use the gifts that that we've been given mm-hmm. well we are at at time. So, uh, Josh, would you be willing to, to pray to close us out? Absolutely. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these words and for the challenge that they provide us to not only search for, but to use the spiritual gifts to further your kingdom and to, uh, expose you to people who don't know about you. And with the understanding that we still, need to be maturing through this process and that you are the goal your our relationship with you is is really what we're after and inviting people into that so lord i pray that these these words they challenge each and every person that's listening Um, a great way for that is to get involved in small groups and if you've got any kind of inclination with that it it is well worth your time to get involved in church and get involved in a small group and I pray that the Lord empowers you to be able to reach everybody that he wants you to reach. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for listening. Please like, follow, and share so we can reach as many as possible. If you're not already participating in a small group, we highly encourage you to get involved in one. If you have a prayer request or comments on the show, you can send them to our email in the show description. Once again, thank you for joining us.